to introduce the next speaker, we'll be having Mental Health and Wellness in the New Normal by Gina Chai Jiayi. It has been such an interesting ride. Well, for a lot of you who have not yet graduated or just graduated, you must be feeling very similar um, emotions as I did when uh, I came out of school and it's job hunting. It can get stressful. And then first thing you ask yourself, okay, how can I adult through this? How can I turn up in an interview, turn up at networking events and feel like, you know what, I'm part of this, I'm ready for your organization and I can function. How? Mental well-being is how. But mental well-being is such a conundrum, which is why the title of um, my segment, I get stressed by trying not to be stressed. I'm not sure if any of you are like me, but I'm, the more I think about not being stressed, the more stressed I am. The more I think about trying to be well, trying to take care of myself, the, the more negative emotions I get just by thinking about those things. So hopefully um, today, my little method is going to help all of you through that as it did for me. Okay, to begin my segment, I would like all of you, um, I hope you're all still there, uh, to join me in this little activity. Um, I'm going to show you a mentee code. So there it is. Uh, so please go on to uh, mentee.com and just key in this specific code. Okay, once you key it in, I will time you, uh, I will give you about 30 seconds. Please write down any thoughts you have right now anything. It doesn't have to be related to anything I have said or anything. Random stuff. Please input as many as possible. Oh, I see what's turning up. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can see my share screen. Still have a few more seconds. Keep it coming. Yeah, keep going. Oh, I see dinner. Someone's hungry. <laughs> what is performance test? This is so interesting. Satisfied, happy. What? Beer? Lunch? Someone hasn't had lunch? It's 3.30. Break. <laughs> Stressed about the future. Yes, I also want to go on holiday. Thank you. <laughs> Cold. Are you in the aircon room? Okay, in three, two, and one. All right, we're going to stop here. Wow. Wow, look at this. Okay, I see stress about the future. I see sleep deprived. I see job search. Old life. Wow. We've got some beautiful souls here. Love. Aw, guys. <laughs> Satisfied. Why must adult? I ask myself that every day. I still don't have an answer. So if anyone has an answer, type it in the chat, please. Thank you. Future planning. Yes, very important. Yeah, I heard about um, that chat just now. Bad news. Okay. All right. Now, so many things, right? COVID, job search, all of these things. All of these things are really, really taking us, let me go back to my slide, away from ourselves, okay? All these things, <clears throat> they are causing negative thoughts and sometimes negative thoughts. I see some of your positive thoughts on there as well. We will address the positive thoughts and emotions also. But let's start with the negative thoughts. Okay, and how that sometimes really can impact our wellness. Now, the new norm. The new norm, just now someone wrote, uh, want to go on a holiday. Yeah. I mean, we have not traveled for almost one full year. I think last week was the anniversary of um, the, the Wuhan virus coming, um, becoming global. And it's been such a long time. For those of you who are international students, I feel so terrible that you guys have not been able to return home and see your family and your friends. Those of you who are super extroverts, you want to hang out with more than five friends, four other friends rather, and you cannot. So all of these things, how do we embrace them? Like this little plant that you see, instead of constantly looking into the cracks, which is normally what human beings do, right? When something is wrong, what, what do we do? We try and fix it. Yeah, it is a reaction. However, how do we go beyond that? How do we embrace the cracks? Look at the here and the now. And I realize one word keeps coming up for me, control. How do I have a little bit more control over my thoughts, a little bit more control over my emotions and the way I feel about um, specific things that people say or situations I'm in or things of the past and things of the present? How do I do all that? Control. So let's look at control today. There we are. Okay. So how do we have more control? And the other nicer word is management. 
to emotionally be able to manage ourselves on a day-to-day basis can get really, really daunting and really tiring. Now, negative emotions come from, usually they do stem from neg- negative thoughts. Okay, now uh, for those of us who uh, are fresh graduates, you're going into the job search world. Okay, and when you're there, often what happens is you walk into an interview feeling anxious. Okay, that's, that's already a negative um, emotion. And then you get through that very, very tough interview via Zoom, no less, because now you know, you're not allowed to meet anyone anymore. And then you come out of it feeling dejected even though you have not gotten an answer. Better yet, some organizations don't get back to you. They just kind of let you live out the two weeks and like, oh yeah, sorry, didn't get the job. But you know, if we don't let you know in two weeks, that's the end of that. So many negative emotions. So what happens when you have negative thoughts that causes emotion? When you start feeling like this, you stop functioning. So all of these emotions, they take up our brain capacity And when that happens, it diminishes your brain's ability to think and to reason. Two things that are most important in an interview, besides your beautiful personality, of course. Okay, so how do we go about that? Because you're going to have more than one interview. Well, I'm not as lucky. I didn't get my job on the first try. So this is my third or fourth interview with um, different organizations before I got this job with Rainbow Center. So failing the first interview and going into the second one, I'm already thinking, oh gosh, that's the future for me. I'm going to fail the second one as well. This is terrible because I failed the first one. And why? Why didn't they want me? Is there something wrong with me? Is it me? Oh, uh, maybe I'm just not what they're looking for. But that's what I studied. I'm built for it. So many negative emotions. How do we diminish that? We'll talk about in a little bit. Emotions, the other flip side, the positive, right? I mean, positivity is great. That's what everyone has been saying, right? You've got to vibe positively and you have to step into interviews looking like you're enthusiastic and you really want the job and you're ready for the job and you're excited about the interviewers and the questions. Now, positive thoughts, when, come, when it comes in many, many folds and in a way too strong can also have really, really negative and daunting effects, especially when you turn up for an interview. So what happens is positive or negative, as long as it is a type of emotion, it takes up mental energy, okay? And when that happens, what um, with positive energy is that you're going to start speaking faster. You know how sometimes you go into um, studying for an exam and then you mark out certain questions that your lecturer has said, okay, okay, you're going to study this chapter. And then when the chapter comes out in the exam, you get super excited. I do that for the interview. So I try to preempt what the interviewers are about to ask me. And then when they ask it, I get super positive, super excited because I was ready, right? And then what do I do? I speak fast. I speak incoherently. I I go into my own little circle of stories. (sighs) Sometimes I come out of such an interview feeling like I don't even know what my answers were. I don't remember any of the questions they had asked. So you see, not such a good thing um, uh, after all. And that being said, right, I found it very, very difficult to focus on the interviewer's questions when I'm constantly trying to be positive, trying to bring out this persona that cannot be felt via Zoom. So what happens is the negative emotions the anxiety, the worry before an interview, and the positive emotions. Some of us are faking it, some of us just has it, but it's trying to be positive, right? When they come together, we get messy. We get really messy interviews. We leave interview Zoom rooms feeling like you have no idea what happened or what to expect from the organization, and that is not good. So question now is how do we manage that emotion? Pardon me? Okay, so we've all seen things like that. Go and read through the list now. I'm not going to go through it. Okay, this entire long list. Oh, by the way, the list goes on. (laughs) These are just a few items. And when you go through a list like that, oh, be self-aware. Know when you're speaking too fast. Slow yourself down. Take a deep breath. Take a step back. Look at the bigger picture. Doesn't it all sound really good? Of course it does. If I can do it, that's why I always tell my friends. If I can do it, great. They sound really beautiful. And all this list 
do you realize that it points to one thing, the most hit thing in psychotherapy nowadays that everyone is talking about? Mindfulness. I know some of you, your face right now is like that. Because mine is. Every time some mindfulness guru or someone with a lot of positive psychology experience comes to me and go, okay, you have to be mindful. Take a step back. Imagine you're on a roundabout. Your thoughts are the cars and they're just going past you. Don't let yourself be in the roundabout. Sit there and look at your thoughts go, you know what? I cannot sit there and look at my thoughts go by. Just to tell myself to sit there and let my thoughts go by, I'm thinking very, very hard. And guess what? Lady here, I have no attention span to sit through a 30 minute, 30 minute meditation. And the first thing they ask you when you switch on the YouTube video is sit in a quiet room. Imagine a yellow light. Ground yourself. Really? I cannot ground myself. I cannot silence my thoughts. And I cannot continuously control the way I breathe. And guess what? I'm a movement therapy. I'm a dancer by training. I understand the way I breathe and it is so difficult to do. So how do we go about that? I've tried virtual reality. I have tried silent meditation re uh, resorts that you go there and just don't speak to anyone for two days. Not so, not so easy, by the way. Very, very difficult. Meditation for hours at an end until I fall asleep and my teacher has to wake me up. Nothing has worked. So here, I'm going to show you an equation that I found that actually worked for me. So out of that entire long list, right, that I show you, see, the entire long list? What if I told you just the one thing? One thing, 30 seconds. That's all you need. There we go. Enough of eyeball rolling. All right, let's go through the one thing then. It is your psycho psychological process of bringing to your own attention the very current internal and external experiences. So it has to be in the current. Now, those of you, um, I'm not sure any, any of you have done um, any practices of my, on mindfulness. I do have um, very mindful friends telling me that this is very forceful. And I do agree, to some extent it is. However, guess what? I, a person like me who has very short attention span, I sometimes do require that force. The force to tell me, you know what? Stop thinking. Do you know that there's a Harvard research, right? That found that we, we spend, what? 47% of our lives in thought. Thinking about dinner, about Christmas, about the lunch that had just passed, whether the chicken was good or not, and whether, you know, what song you're going to sing next week for the Christmas party, everything. We're just in thoughts all the time. So how do we then, working for me, experience the here and the now and to silence our thoughts for 30 seconds in a day? And I found that it really, really helped. This guy. So I went... Um, on a mad rampage on Google because I've had enough of four hour long audiobooks and the books I have to read about mindfulness and the gurus I have to listen to going through that long list and how to meditate. Enough. So I found this guy. His name is um, Phil Boisier and he has come up with this three by three method. He's a psychotherapist um, by training and he works in the Silicon Valley. One thing that um, Silicon Valley has a lot in, um, uh, in similarity with Singapore is the pace. So people move a little bit faster and we don't have the time, we don't have the excessive energy to sit there for 30 minutes and, um, and wait for good things to happen and our thoughts to go around us. So the three by three method, it really worked. How do we do the three by three? So just now, I've shown you this to bring to your attention the current experiences. That's all you need to remember. Now the 30 seconds. This is what happens. We are going to identify one physical object. It can be anything around the room. Now, if you look around the room, I have aircon, I have a light switch, I have a door, okay? I have a cup. However, very important, do not add any subjective descriptors to any of the objects. That you're about to identify. So do not say, this is a pink cup with a white... No, don't do that. Just, this is a cup. Make sure that item is visually um, 
available to you because you do need to look at it. So mo a moving car probably not going to work so well because it's going to go somewhere else. Pink card. So let's start with this one. I and identify the object. In my mind, I'm going to say it out loud for now, but do say it in your mind, especially if you're out in public, because people might think, you know, you're having a really difficult time if you just say it out loud on a bus or something. This is a cup. Then we proceed to breathe in and out. That's it. That's one cycle. And it's called three by three because I repeat that cycle three times. Okay, very simple. Only three steps. Identification, breathing in, breathing out. Repeating three times. Now, Phil did bring to our attention that sometimes if you are, you are walking into a huge interview that is so excitable and um, it triggers all these different emotions in you waiting in the waiting room, what you can do is upgrade it to a nine by nine. But um, so far, I found the three by three to be really, really sweet. And um, that's, that's like the sweet spot for me, the three by three. I never found the need for more. So for the sake of trying, I want everyone to do it with me. Um, and later on, you get to try this on your own as well um, in the next slide. But for now, bear with me. We're going to all do it together. So look into my screen and my eyes, okay? We're going to use three objects. Pencil. Nail polish. And you've seen it earlier, the cup. Ready? I'm going to start with the cup. I will identify the object for you. All you need to do is to repeat that in your head. We proceed to breathe in and out together and I'll move on to the next one. Here we go. This is a cup. This is a pencil. This is a nail polish. That's it. Even though, um, because the objects are right by my face, I'm not actually looking at them. I actually found that I can visualize objects better now and I can even do it um, while controlling my thoughts, limiting them, of course, with objects that I suddenly feel like I can feel. Maybe I can't see my sock in my shoe, but I can feel it, that I can visualize it and I can utilize it as well. But I would recommend practice with objects that are in your vicinity, your visual vicinity. Okay. Cool. I hope that worked for all of you as well as it did me because frankly speaking, that was 30 seconds of our time and that worked beautifully. For that 30 seconds, I didn't think of anything else but the three objects. Now, why the three by three? It actually helps me. It, um, like everything else, it might not help everyone. But from my own experience, it really helped ease my repeated stresses. Simple things like um, the coffee auntie getting your coffee wrong or someone speaking to you not so nicely. I take a moment, a very straightforward moment, instead of getting into the cycle of, oh my God, that person is so mean. Why is she? Why can't she just do a job? You have like one job, bro. Instead of doing that, I quiet myself down and I go, this is a cut. And that's it. I actually feel less angry because I stopped that thought in its tracks. When you stop something in its tracks and you don't allow it to manifest, you recover faster. And when you recover faster, you garner your energy better and your thoughts better and your emotions better, which will then, maybe after that cup of coffee, I was going for a very important interview, I still have the energy. It was not wasted on, you know, the coffee auntie. And of course, it helps the impulse to check digital devices. What do we do in the waiting room? Check Facebook, check Instagram. We are always scrolling, right? If you take a moment to not scroll, your thought, your mental process actually remains fresher for the interview or whatever important networking meeting or the people you're about to speak to. So that really helps too. Of course, it comes and regulates your mental emotional state prior to an important event as I've 
just mentioned with the first two points. Last but not least, the most important one, it allows you to be brought back to the current moment. Mindfulness is about not thinking about the past, not thinking about the future, but to live in the present, to allow yourself to be here right now, like you are with me. Don't know how many of you are thinking about dinner, but like you are with me, okay? All right, last but not least, before you leave me today, go on, man oh, sorry. Go on menteam.com again, but instead, before you start typey, typey, typey in your thoughts, I want you to do the three items. So now, I'm going to go back to this slide. Look around your room. Look for three physical objects. You can say it out loud. You can say it in your brain. You can breathe through your nose, your mouth, your ears if you can. Doesn't matter as long as you're breathing. And while the 30 seconds, I want you to go through the three objects. So remember, identify, deep breath in, deep breath out. Repeat three times. While you're at it, input any random thoughts, if any, that comes to your brain. Okay? That's 30 seconds. Those of you who have not hit that entry button, hit it now. I'll wait five more seconds for all entries to be in. Four. Three. <laughs> Coffee, auntie. Oh, you guys, you're listening to me. <laughs> Still cold. You need a hug, bro. Or lady. All right. I hope you can see my two screens. This is from your first round. Look at the number of thoughts. It doesn't matter what thoughts, as I've mentioned. It's the number that counts. And look at it now. So this is what it's done for me. Even if I don't necessarily feel less excitable before a meeting, I might not um, necessarily feel happier all of a sudden. What this 30 second does for me is stop me in my tracks and somehow allows my brain and my mind a moment to tell myself, you know what, not that important. And that's okay. And it's okay. And that's when I realize, wow, I start being more mindful. Even though I'm not trying to be mindful, I am. I'm letting it go. I'm letting that coffee auntie go. Go. Be bad attitude towards me any day. I have my breathing technique and I'm okay. Yeah? Last but not least, I would like to leave you with this. It's my favorite quote. And I always tell um, some of the students that I have, uh, my competitive dancers especially, K Sarah Sarah. It's so important. Those of you who know the song, whatever will be, will be, to not think of the future because we cannot control that. Not yet. Okay? Not to think about the past. You had your chance to control it. Maybe you didn't do such a good job, but guess what? That's past. That's okay too, because you can no longer have a hand in it. Okay? Live in the now, and whenever you need, live your 30 seconds. I hope today has really helped. Thank you very much for spending time with me, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Gina, for your presentation. It's really insightful and love the energy. Uh, I think the 3x3 three three has really helped. Uh, I feel more present now. I wish that had helped me this morning because I actually had this annoying no noodle auntie. I think I waited 30 minutes for my bak chow mee for breakfast. I wish I had learned this earlier, but yeah. Um, for now, let's open the floor for Q&A. If anyone has any questions for Gina, you can type in, in the chat or in the Q&A function. Oh, I actually see a question in the Q&A from Vivek. Uh, the question is, could you explain to us more about movement therapy? Sure. So um, I'm a dancer by training my past, well, my past and present life. I've been dancing since I was five. Uh, ballet is my go-to technique. That being said, movement therapy for me right now, um, I mean, there are so many different types. Uh, for me right now, it's combining uh, psychological science and the portion of it that I've chosen is proprioception and memory because I work a lot with patients with Parkinson's disease and for them, these two things can firstly help them um, mitigate danger. They are very bad with balance. So proprioception is very important. 
and secondly is short-term memory to enforce the fact that if you can memorize an exercise I've given to you 15 seconds ago, that's going to push their memory through and um, actually help them to maintain whatever you know, amount of mental health they have left. That being said, movement therapy right now, uh, it can be anything from using a very specific dance technique. Like for myself, I use ballet and contemporary techniques. I know of movement therapists who uses only, let's say, ah, they have these movement therapies for chair-bounded individuals where they do more jazz technique, you know, the jazz hands. And old folks, they really, really love it. And for them, movement therapy is beyond just moving. It's beyond that. It's about music. Um, a lot of you might have heard of music therapy. So music plays a huge part with move, in movement therapy in helping the mind settle into a better form. And last but not least, the social. The social part of movement therapy helps a lot, a lot of people. And movement therapy is not just for the geriatrics. I do movement therapy as a behavioral form of behavioral therapy for children um, with autism and ADHD as well. And we have seen really good results. Like um, we have actually removed children from pharmacotherapy entirely. We have been able to allow, just by teaching them to stand still in class, uh, movement is about standing still just as much as moving. We have allowed them to sit better in classrooms, which makes them better learners, things like that. And of course, injuries and stuff, you know, movement therapy allows for your, um, to build muscle groups to support the different joints that might have been injured before. I hope I'm answering your question correctly. Thanks for asking. All right, thank you, Gina, for that answer. Uh, there's a next question from an anonymous attendee. You mentioned not to be specific in details about the object you choose for the three by three activity, but wouldn't being more specific help you focus more? That's a very good question because when I first learned the three by three, that was my exact thought. I'm like, if I drill in deeper, that makes the hole smaller, right? It doesn't. <laughs> so you see, cut. The moment I go, this is a cup, pink, water droplets. What do I start thinking about? Water, right? I start thinking about, oh, water, what's in the drink? And then, oh, my name, look, Gina, my name. Oh, white straw, why not a black straw? I like a black straw. Why can't I buy a white straw? Oh, why is there a cover on the cup? I don't need a cover on my cup, right? See? So the moment we drill deeper, it becomes a cycle. And it's a cycle we are trying to kind of stop in its tracks. When we bring in more information, we allow our brain to think further, think deeper. And that's something we don't want to do. We just want the object to help us stabilize our thoughts in that very moment. That's why I keep stressing the object is of no importance and why I can eventually do it without looking at anything. So I know I'm wearing socks. I'm not seeing them because they're in my shoe but I can go, that's my sock. And that's good. Yeah. So try it. Yes, I still highly recommend it. Feel as well. Um, don't dig deep into the subjective part of the, the object you're trying to identify. Yeah, I hope that helps. All right. I hope that answers the question. Uh, any other questions, please direct it to the chat or to the Q&A. We'll wait for more questions to pop up, if any. Okay, so far there doesn't seem to be any, but actually I have a question. Uh, you know the way that sometimes you try to be mindful and present and implement these kind of things, but sometimes um, it's, how to say, it's an environment that you can't really escape, uh, where, for example, there might be negativity or people complaining or whatever. What can you do in those times? Um, so similar to my sock concept, because it is something greater and it's something that I'm I'm directly feeling that I cannot control, I still do my 30 seconds. However, I close my eyes. And I think about something that is very far away from the current situation I'm in. So I take up, this is um, from my end. It's not from Phil. Phil stops at the very visual objects. But it, this has worked for me. Um, so what I do is, let's say, 
the coffee auntie. Let's go back to the coffee auntie or your noodle auntie. She's just being so negative and so mean and just screaming and people are unhappy. There's a kid behind you kicking. It's just not good. I close my eyes and I actually think, I like to think about my dog. He's super adorable. So I like to think about him and I just go, milk tea in my head because that's his name and I just say it. Second thing I felt has really helped is feeling myself to be able to feel that I exist in my own entity. I know it, it sounds a bit like, oh, oh my God, she's a bit cuckoo. It might be. But this has um, proven to work with uh, children with um, autism and ADHD, especially when they're very close to meltdowns, which is essentially the same mechanism. It's the same lighting up of the brain when adults are in a lot of stress. Okay, so we squeeze our hands together, push it really, really hard. My knuckles are sometimes turning blue. I hold for about five good seconds. See, I'm shaking because I'm squeezing that hard. And then I release it very slowly as I breathe out. I do that as a physical, because I, I want my own physical feelings to be greater than the environment that has helped. I have not found a more philosophical way to just kind of, you know what, it's fine, let it go, she's just noisy. Those positive thoughts, unfortunately, has not worked for me. So maybe some of you, like um, <laughs> yourself, you, you, you have the ability to think positive thoughts and just remove yourself from that bad situation. I don't, so I do the hand squeezing quite a bit alongside with my students, especially if they're melting down, because because I work in Rainbow Center, and we have a lot of that on a daily basis. So I just kind of do that. And then I release and I breathe. And then I deal with what I can deal with. Yeah, deal with what you can deal with. Deal with waiting for your noodle. Look at your noodle and just think about your noodle and nothing else. <laughs> I hope it helps. Then I get hungrier. <laughs> <laughs> Driven food. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Gina. Uh, I think that's it for the questions. Uh, 